What is going on everybody? My name is Jordan. I'm the head coach here at SaberSim and I just wanted to record a quick little video talking about SaberSim's adjusted ownership. Uh, I think this data is really interesting in the way that it helps you make game theory decisions and determine if you want to play or fade the chalk. And a lot of people don't even know we have this and the people that do don't really even know exactly how powerful it is and how it works. So I wanted to record a quick video walking through it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, adjusted ownership, where can you find it in the app and what exactly is it? So we've got this new column, adjusted ownership, and this is gonna be present on all the slates and sports that we have Sims for here. And basically what we're doing with adjusted ownership is we're taking the player's original ownership projection, which is the percentage of lineups in a contest we think are going to have that player in it. And we're making an adjustment for that player based on the player's range of outcomes in our Sims. Essentially what we're trying to do is figure out what does this ownership, this player's ownership count for based on how high or low variance that player actually is. Ownership in DFS is not entirely one-dimensional. It's not necessarily true that we always want to fade the chalk. If chalk is really high variance and the player that is going to be chalky has a really wide range of outcomes, that's the kind of chalk we want to fade because just as often as that player is going to have a high upside game, they're also going to fail a lot and we can get an edge on the field by fading that ownership. On the flip side, if a player is going to be really chalky but is has a very low variance range of outcomes and is going to achieve uh, positive high scoring outcomes very often, we don't necessarily want to just blind fade that chalk because that player could just be a really good play and we could get different elsewhere. That's exactly what adjusted ownership is doing is it's taking the player's ownership projection, comparing to their range of outcomes and determining is this player good chalk or bad chalk. A player who is bad chalk according to adjusted ownership is going to have this column be higher than their ownership projection. So for Tommy Edmond for example, Cardinals look like a pretty good play here tonight. Uh, they're playing Boston. They have a 5.3 uh, run total. They're not very expensive. We're saying Tommy Edmond's ownership projection of 20 actually counts as if his, he was going to be owned 31.24% of the time because his range of outcomes is so wide. Basically, if you're going to play Tommy Edmond here, uh, it is you need to make sure it is worth playing him as if he was being owned at 31.24% because he's going to fail if we look at his range of outcomes here. Most of the time, he's going to fail. So even at 22% ownership, uh, Saberson is saying he's probably going to be a little bit over-owned there. On the flip side, if we look over here at some of the pitchers and look at the top uh, ownership pitchers here, uh, Corbin Burns has an ownership projection of 35. His adjusted ownership is like 37, which is basically right in line with the ownership projection. And we can see, clicking into his name here, he does still have uh, some outcomes where he's going to fail, but his range of outcomes is uh, lower variance and a lot more of the most likely outcomes are around that mean. So he's... Uh, in this case, a little bit more deserving of that ownership projection. So again, what we're trying to do is we're looking at the range of outcomes of the player in our play-by-play -play game simulations and figuring out, do they deserve the ownership? Are they over or under-owned relative to their variance? A player in a general sense whose adjusted ownership is higher than their ownership projection is going to be uh, over-owned relative to their variance. A player whose adjusted ownership is lower than their ownership projection is going to be uh, under-owned and a player where those two things are close is, is kind of fair fairly owned relative to their variance. Now, probably the coolest part of adjusted ownership here is you can look at these adjusted ownerships all day and figure out maybe how you want to play the slate, but this data is actually taken into account automatically when you build your lineups with SaberSim. When you go to build your lineups, we are going to sort those lineups based on the Saber score that is appropriate for the slate size and the size of the contest that you're playing. And in these sorting methods, you can see that adjusted ownership is a negative weighting factor for how we weight the lineups. We're going to value lineups with a very high adjusted ownership less than lineups with a lower adjusted ownership. And because this adjusted ownership is already prescriptive based on the Sims, you're capturing this naturally in your lineups. If we just look at this build here that I ran earlier this morning, you can see looking at our pitchers, we're generally comfortable getting some exposure to some of the top pitchers on the slate because we understand that that adjusted ownership is not much higher than their Saberson ownership. Corbin Burns is a perfect example of a very well projected, very fairly priced play that while he is going to be the chalkiest pitcher on the slate, isn't a guy that we necessarily want to get away from. On the flip side, if we go look at the batters and we look at the highest adjusted owned guys on the slate, we're completely fading most of these guys here in our top 20 lineups. We're under the field on Tommy Edmond and a little under the field on Dylan Carlson, uh, but Juan Yepes, uh, Paul Goldschmidt, Trey Turner, it looks like Philly and Coors is going to be very popular as well. These guys are players whose their variance is too high to deserve the ownership they're getting. So because adjusted ownership is taken into account in this sorting method, we're getting a lot less of them. Sabersim in this case for, for this slate is 
already making a determination on what the good chalk is on the slate, Corbin Burns and some of the pitchers, and what the bad chalk is on the slate, the Phillies and Cardinals stacks, at least to some extent here. And this is true for all sports. Different sports are going to have players adjusted ownership look different based on position or based on the context of that slate. But no matter what, we're always taking this adjusted ownership into account when you're, we're building the lineups and scoring them after to determine what are the best ones to play in your contests. Anyway, that is all there is to it. I just wanted to record this quick video going through adjusted ownership and the way that it is taken into account with Sabre score, because I know while many people know ownership is a very important part of DFS, it can be really challenging to figure out when is the right time to play the chalk, when is the right time to fade the chalk based on the sport and the slate uh, and the contest you're playing, and the adjusted ownership with Sabre Sims Sabre score and simulations really just helps simplify that decision-making process for me every single night I'm playing DFS, and I think it could help you a lot as well. If you haven't already checked out Sabersim, we do have a free trial on our site, sabersim.com. And if you have any other questions about this or the rest of the lineup building process with our tools, you can reach out in our Discord server or by emailing support at sabersim.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching and good luck.